eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff of Falcon 9, Starlink Ford at 11. M1D chamber pressures are nominal. T plus 42 seconds into flight to Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from our Vandenberg Space Force Base, carrying our stack of 50 Starlink satellites to orbit. And a moment ago, we began to throttle down the engines on the first stage in preparation for max Q. This is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of pressures during ascent. Max Q. And there was Max Q. So we have a couple of events happening in quick succession in about a minute. First up, we'll have main engine cutoff, also known as Miko, followed by stage separation, and then second engine cutoff, a second engine start one, excuse me, also known as SES one. Uh, first up, main engine cutoff. This is where all nine engines on the first stage will shut down in order to slow the vehicle down in preparation for. Uh, stage separation. During stage separation, the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our uh, targeted landing zone. In this case, it's the uh, drone ship, of course, I still love you, currently waiting in the Pacific Ocean. And the second stage will continue its journey with the third event, second engine start one. This is where the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit. Miko. Stage, Stage separation confirmed. confirmed. And back startup. So we did have successful main Bearing engine cutoff. Confirmed. Stage separation, uh, second engine start of the Merlin vacuum engine, and you just saw on screen that the fairing halves have uh, been deployed from the top of our second stage. We've been flying uh, reflown fairing halves since 2019, and today's fairings are flight proven, and we're going to be attempting to recover them when they return to Earth as well. Uh, so, as expected, we got some phenomenal footages, uh, footage of ascent. A couple of views on screen right now. On the left-hand side of your screen is the first stage. Uh, it's a view from the top of our first stage looking down. Uh, its journey, it's, it's heading back to our drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. And on the right-hand side of your screen is a view of that Merlin vacuum engine glowing, glowing red hot, uh, continuing to carry our stack of Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Again, these are live views. Uh, in order for the first stage to make its way back to our drone ship, it needs to execute two burns. The first is an entry burn where three of the engines on the first stage will reignite, and this will help to slow down the stage as it re-enters the upper parts of the atmosphere. The second burn for the first stage is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn that will bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. So a few minutes away from those entry and landing burns. For now, we're enjoying some great views of both stages. The engine that you see on screen on the second stage is a little bit different than the engines on the 
bottom of the first stage is actually optimized to perform in the vacuum of space, being able to produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust compared to the engines on the first stage, which Both are actually optimized to perform at sea level. They're, they can produce about 190,000 of, of thrust, 190,000 pounds of thrust each. So on the left-hand side of the screen, we see some puffs of gas. That is nitrogen gas from our attitude control systems. And on the adjacent side of that, um, those puffs of gas, you can see two of our four hypersonic grid fins. These help to steer and guide the first stage back uh, to its landing zone. When we do do our landing burn, uh, the center engine can also gimbal or tilt, and that also helps to uh, direct the first stage and help it land as well. So we're just under 45 seconds away from the first of those two burns, the entry burn on the first stage. Again, it is a three engine burn to slow the stage down before hitting the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Things continuing to go smoothly for our second stage. Stage one entry burn startup. And you can see on screen, three of our nine engines on the first stage have relit and are currently slowing down that booster. This burn is expected to last about 20 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. And with that, that is a successful entry burn. We have one more burn to go on the first stage in about a minute. Stage one, FTS is safe. After the landing burn ends and we attempt our landing on our first stage, uh, we're gonna be listening for uh, the call out for SECO, also known as second engine cutoff one, and then a confirmation of good orbit. For today's mission, we are gonna be having two coast phases. So after we shut off our second stage engine that you see on screen, we'll coast for about 40 minutes, and then we'll actually relight the engine for a few seconds, and then coast again before we deploy the satellites about T plus one, a little after T plus one hour into the mission. Stage one transonic. So we did lose video footage of the first stage. This can sometimes happen um, as the stage is traveling pretty quickly, but we do hear call out to that. Texas. Um, it stage is continuing two terminal guidance. to make its way to our drone ship. Stage two, FTS is safe. And here's stage a one view landing burn. of our drone ship. We just heard the call out that the stage one landing burn has started. So if we are successful, this will be the fourth time that this booster has successfully landed. Stage one landing leg deploy. Hearing call outs that we did get the landing legs deployed. Waiting for audio or visual confirmation of that first stage. And there stage it is. Stage one landing confirmed. Right in the middle of our drone ship. That is a successful first stage landing, the fourth for this particular first stage booster.